We've discussed before how in the early to mid 1990s the multimedia trend was really taking off on the PC and various companies made uh, MPEG decoder cards for VCDs and such. There was a company that had been around a long time, a DEC, and they decided to step into this market. And really they just tried anything they could as by now they were having a lot of problems and starting to run out of money. I don't think this device would have helped them very much. In any case, uh, we'll be taking a look at that one today. Hello everyone, I'm High Treason and as noted we're going to have a look at that MPEG card. The story of DEC themselves is something I'm not really going to go into because it's a really long one and it's actually quite depressing but that's for somebody else and uh, I'm sure you can find information about it out there. We're just going to be focusing on this card which you might have figured they didn't even make but yeah uh, well, we'll just do that, I suppose. Digital Equipment Corporation, or DEC, is a name with a very long history, and upon hearing it, many will think of the PDP range of mini computers. Some of which are still in operation around the world. Their operating system also popularised a few conventions that ended up in CPM and DOS, but unfortunately as time went on, DEC began hemorrhaging money and eventually went defunct. The whole story is quite a long one, and it's actually quite sad, not least because towards the end they were putting their name on all kinds of crap trying to just make a few bucks, and we have an example of that today. This is the DEC Full Video Elite. Or is it light? Did they put it in the wrong box? Uh, yeah, even the registration card doesn't add up. Um, only one person dealing with this apparently. I guess they didn't expect high sales. How would you register? We can't register this thing. Uh, right, okay. Well, I don't know if there's a dark or a heavy version of it as well. Probably not, but in any case, it needs to come out of that box because it was factory sealed and I don't like that, plus the shrink wrap was damaging it. To be honest, it's not what I was expecting. The Real Magic logo made me think I'd end up with one of those weird little cards that everyone knows about. But no, we ended up with this thing. It's a Real Magic light. For a start, these don't use the weird mini DIN cable, and instead they use an internal Visa feature connector, which actually sucks, because I can't use it in the machine I wanted to, because its graphics card doesn't have one. Also look at this, it's another one of those stupid cards with no internal audio header. So yeah, move the video signal inside, move the audio signal outside, you bellends. MPEG processing hardware is also different, not using the C-Cube chip, and being much less tightly integrated. Shouldn't it cost more then if it has a higher component? Did they just have a really big markup on the the non light version of the Real Magic? I mean, it's quite clear Real Magic made this thing, it wasn't DEC. Now, the box claims we can install this in a 25 MHz 386 SX. I'm um, not so sure about how well that would work, especially if we didn't have an FPU, as I sort of suspect you'd need it for the audio at least. Maybe, unless the card does it in hardware, but it doesn't really look like the the crystal chip it uses? I don't know if... Uh, yeah, who knows? It won't matter for reasons that'll become apparent. Uh, one of those reasons being that we'll be installing this thing in my DX50 486. We'll now be limited to 256 colour display modes, but MPEGs should only happen in full colour, and in theory there should be better signal quality as, well, we're just copying the frame buffer digitally to the card, right? The card isn't too awkward to fit, I mean, it's an ISA card, what do you expect? But I'm still mad at the lack of internal audio header, I mean, come on! The, the, the other Real Magic card had that, or was that a CD input? If that was just a CD input, that's even worse. What a bunch of dickheads. What did the industry have against internal audio outputs to connect to your sound card? It, it never liked them, it never has, never will. It's stupid, it's annoying. But they had a stupid wire at the back going to my pro audio spectrum, where actually it's a sound man, it's a rebadged one. I guess this is a machine of rebadged hardware. Yeah, because we better install the software. I have to hand it to them, the install is actually really nice, and I quite like the look and feel of it. It reminds me of the one for Optis sound cards, and hey, we know it's a quality product. Full MPEG video playback. Real magic technology. And it's got the power range, uh, well, anyway, it's quality, apparently. 
to be honest though, the installer is so nice, I don't have much to say about it, because it just works, does its job. This should be a nice easy experience from here on out. Alas, uh, it's not. For one thing, there's no proper player included, but a test one for DOS, and uh, that doesn't seem to be working outside of full screen. I don't know, it messes the VGA palette up. It does fix it on startup, but it evidently doesn't always do that properly because I just kept getting weird colours. This is a documented thing, and like I say, when it initialises the card, it tries to fix it, but it's not always successful. Uh, otherwise, though, out of the box, you can only load the demo CD. But I want to watch my cheesy music videos and such. Uh, well, that's a problem because it doesn't uh, expose the MCI device to media player by default, and I can't remember what I had to do to get it to do that, but, it, well, here we go. And it immediately goes wrong. And why do you suppose that's happening? Well, let's try a file from somewhere else. Maybe Ulead or Nero or something. And maybe it just doesn't like the ones that come out of Sonic Foundry. Same thing. To me, this felt like a DMA issue, so I spent copious amounts of time fiddling about with that and the bus timing of the system, but to no avail. It would be easy to blame the system, being a DX50, but the CPU is more than powerful enough if we go by the box, and the ISA bus should be running at a fairly mundane 8.33 MHz, which, well, it's really spec, isn't it, to be honest, it's not exactly deviating very much. In fact, the manual almost recommends running it out of spec at a higher speed, which I find rather suspicious. MPEG-1 VCD streams are designed to work with a single-speed CD-ROM drive, albeit an MPC-compliant one. Single-speed CD-ROM drives, by definition, can transfer 150 kilobytes or kibabytes per second, and they must be able to sustain this to be MPC-1 compliant. It's far less than 8 MHz ISA bus, in any case, even if it was a heavily congested one, it should be able to shove multiple megabytes per second up and down there without too much trouble. Decompressed video, on the other hand, well, we discussed that back when I looked at the WinTV Celebrity Capture Card. And this is curious, I feel we may be coming back to that point. In any case, I couldn't find the problem. It simply shouldn't be the system speed, as sure, we have to copy bits of video to RAM, then to the card, but as we established, this shouldn't be too bad. I'll admit the hard drive in this machine isn't very fast, and nor is the SCSI card that it's attached to, but again, it's way faster than MPEG requires, and the system memory speed is going to be utterly superfluous for this application. That, that can move tens of megabytes per second. Even a late model MFM hard disk in an 8088 would theoretically be more than quick enough to feed the card. I mean, you'd be pushing the system a bit hard by then, but certainly the memory would be just about quick enough, well, more than quick enough, the hard drive would be fast enough, and CD drives we know can do it. Uh, getting the software to run all of that and do it efficiently is a bit of a different story, and I don't think there is any, but it, in, it is theoretically possible going by the specifications on paper. You'd have to have very efficient buffering and everything to really make it work, I think, but I'm sure you could do it. And it, really, the point I'm trying to make is that my 486 just shouldn't be having a problem. That there should be no problem, as really we should just be moving 150 kilobytes per second to memory and then to the card. So yeah, so maybe we need double that bandwidth and adjust for overhead, but it, it's that. It's more than that. There, there should be no problem. This system should have no issue with this. I did try slowing things down too, in case something was too fast in the machine, but still no luck. Look you, sir. Well, by pure chance, I shoved the demo disc in when I ran out of ideas, and what do you know? It works right away. That's odd. Maybe it only likes data that came from real VCD discs, but an Alice in Wonderland VCD rip won't play right either, and, well, yeah, it's a rip, but the data shouldn't be any different. 
dorky uh, camera guy here, if I may interject. Uh, the color inversion is me, because this is a Disney product, and, well, I think this is on YouTube, it's pretty explanatory why I've done this. I mean, I don't want to be prattling about with CDs, if I can help it. Now, speaking of which, do ignore the uh, mismatched CD drive. It's on the list, but an era-appropriate one, and it's just very low on the list, and they're fucking expensive, and I'll get to it eventually. Yet again, that isn't really the point. The point is there must be something special about the files on this one particular CD. I mean, it's not even set up as a VCD disc. It's just a CD with some files on it. Uh, lower bit rates of 100k per second or less. A different audio encoding in joint stereo or mono with a different acoustic model and different la thing. And you well, that, that's some of it's even mono. The, the title sequence is mono, it only plays out of one speaker, and there's other clips on the disc like this. Uh, I wonder what would happen if I spat my video files out with similar parameters. Oh, now they work. That's funny, that, yeah. Stranger still, there are actually some clips on the CD that don't actually play right and stutter like my VCD standard ones. You know what else is weird? The parameters we have to use seem oddly familiar. In fact, they're very similar to the maximums we can use with the WinTV Celebrity Capture Card, which has very minimal compression in the form of the AuraVision codec. In that case, we can edge out 15 frames a second if we take a hit in audio quality and go down to like 8-bit, and we do have to start thinking about mono when we're pushing it like this. If we ease off a bit, we can do stereo, 22 kilohertz, but it's like 12 frames a second, so yeah, now we're actually on par with this MPEG card. And the only limiting factor there is the ISA bus. It's not the WinTV Celebrity. The card itself could go a lot farther if the bus was faster. I'm not saying this card is CPU-bound when it comes to decoding the MPEGs, but I sort of wonder if it would perform better with a faster CPU, because it does get a bit worse if we drop to 33 megahertz. Now, I can't prove it. It might just be that the hardware on the card's underpowered, but that note about the ISA bus sort of makes me wonder if my CPU is in fact doing most of the work here and shoving their uncompressed video streams down the ISA bus to this card, and obviously there's going to be a bit of a bottleneck there, because uncompressed video at you know, VCD quality is a bit too much for an ISA bus running at the standard speed. It does stall the cursor as well when a video is playing. In fact, you can have the opposite effect, and if you hold the mouse button down anywhere at all, the video just stops playing. <laughs> Would that be interrupts? That's, that's strange, because I don't really see that in other solutions. I mean, it might stall a little bit, but not just fully like that. I, I, th that just seems odd to me. It's like, oh, the buffer's gone, and now we can't play anymore. We'll just wait forever. The reason I'm hesitant to believe it's using my CPU very much is that the hardware on the card looks pretty serious potatoes, at least to me. Granted, just being able to composite and scale the video requires quite some circuitry, but, I mean, it is all digital on here, and given this is early 94 technology, I, I just don't know. I'm rather suspicious of it. In any case, with a bit of tweaking, we can get to around 25 frames a second. It seems to drop a few and stutter a bit uh, every now and then. And the quality is noticeably worse than a card that can do full standard-compliant VCD decoding, like the S3 Scenic which is in my Pentium 66. That card's a lot better. And, uh, well, yeah, we do actually have a card that does use the CPU somewhat, and that would be the Max 64 VT that's in my K5. Now, the thing about the Max 64 VT is that it does use the CPU a fair lot. It's a single chip solution, and it does offload a lot of the work to the CPU, but it's quite transparent about the fact it does that, and well, the byproduct of this is that you do get lower quality with it. The Scenic AX2 is pretty much all in hardware, except the audio, which again, it's transparent about, it's right there in the manual and tells you, oh, we do the audio mostly on the CPU. 
This, this is just a video chip, really, with some very minor audio capabilities. And even then, it offloads some of the scaling and such, I think, to the S3 Trio 64V, which is the only thing you can plug it into. This DEC card there don't make anything like that clear. It's supposed to be a full-blown MPEG accelerator as far as the literature would have us concerned, so... Well, uh, it is entirely possible the problem is at the software level here. We can't really rule that out. The drivers might just be bad. There are some generic DEC drivers for the light, the real magic light, and I'm not going to test them because I always try and give you the out-of-the-box experience as it would have been back then, and well, the average consumer probably wouldn't think to do that, especially as there's no contact information or anything for real magic in any of the books. It, it has this lovely compatibility thing. It's like they put effort in in places. Someone tried really hard and then somewhere else they... Was it a communication? What is this? But yeah, you'd only be able to phone DEC if this was what you had. I'm not really sure we have to wonder why the blame lies then, so much as who it lies with. Did DEC mess this up, or was it Sigma Designs, aka Real Magic, that fucked everything over? Was it both of them? Was it a communication issue? Was it neither and some outside factor caused it? Was there a deadline somewhere that they were really up against, or...? Did they outsource some part of the product to some other team that didn't really know how it worked? I don't think we'll ever know for sure. As it stands today, this card isn't really necessary to run the machine. It cost me very little, and it serves as a fun gimmick. I like the look of it, and I'll be keeping it in here, as it doesn't impede the system performance when it's not in use, and... It's a fun little novelty, but if I'd paid the three figures for it in 1994, I'd have been utterly furious. Granted, there weren't many DX50s in the wild by 94, but there were a hell of a lot of DX266s showing up, which weren't really much faster, if at all. Some of them were actually slower, and we're actually on quite a slow DX50, because we're on an ancient motherboard. We've, again, that out-of-box experience, I went with a motherboard from when the CPU was still relevant, instead of a late model one, that would be a lot quicker. Still, there were slower machines out there. There were still a lot of 386s around in 1994, a lot of DX40s out there. And suddenly I realise why this is the only one of these cards I've ever seen. I have to think the few that sold probably got returned in droves. Uh, assuming you could do that with the product name mismatching, could they just fuck you and been like, no, you filled the registration card in wrong or something? I, the, I have seen one person who claims to have a real magic light, but I didn't see any proof they own the card. I'm not saying they don't own it, someone has to have one. They, you know, it's not what they were on about, hey, look at this thing. They just mentioned in passing, like, oh, I've got a real magic light. So th there must be more of them, but, uh, man, I don't know. I'd, I'd love to rip on this thing, to yell at it and say all kinds of mean things, but knowing it came off the sinking ship that was DEC just makes me feel miserable more than angry. There's just something depressing about seeing a name that was once written so proudly upon the PDP-11 slapped across this piece of junk, and it's in Comic Sans, no less, on the demo CD. <laughs> they were likely assured it would perform as advertised. So much was done right here. There was so much effort put in with the manual and the installer and... Even the packaging, actually, is pretty good, but somewhere, be it the hardware or the drivers, it's just falling flat, and unfortunately, there's certain little hints about it that suggest they knew that it was a fuck-up. The fact the demo CD is done the way it is, and the fact that they sort of hint you to overclock the ISA bus in the manual and stuff, they knew this thing didn't work. And unfortunately, I, that's irredeemable. A quicker CPU might fix the card, but unfortunately, I have to go by what they said on the box. It's 2022, and really, at this stage, it's so unimportant that it just doesn't matter. In fact, I even like this thing, but it's a really sorry relic of a then ailing company. It doesn't perform as advertised. Someone clearly knew and tried to sweep it under the carpet by providing that demo CD. If you'd phoned, they'd probably know, well, it totally works. There's something wrong with your video CDs because that demo CD is totally playing. There are a lot of scams around now and a lot of useless hardware out there. Audio full cards with probably just banks of reused salvage capacitors that don't do anything but blinks of LEDs. And God knows what else. And it seems there's nothing new, and it was happening back then. 
Only this card does actually do something, and it had a legitimate, once reputable branding slapped over the top of it. It's historically interesting for that alone, in that it stands as a working or not demonstration of such a device as it was back in the early mid-90s. It's fun now, but then... Oh man, I really hope somebody got a refund for this thing. Then again, it was factory sealed, it probably didn't even sell off the shelf when it was new. Anyway, back to that stupid dorky dickhead in front of the camera. He is a bell end, you know. I'm way, way smarter than he is. And I'm better looking as well. I mean, he's not a bad looking guy. He's actually pretty good looking. Uh, ladies, you can apply for the secretary position if you... Uh, maybe not such a good idea. I'd have to pay taxes then. Yeah, we'll just go back to him before this gets out of hand. Well, there we go. That's that. Uh, it's... I sort of wonder if installing the real magic drives would fix some of the problems. I don't even know if they'd work with it. They might be better. They might have done something to the card so you can't do that. I, I don't know. And I'm going to be honest with you, I'm not going to bother finding out. Because it's not actively making the PC worse. Uh, it's quite novel to have such a sort of scummy device from that long ago. Yeah, you see these things aren't these audio full cards that are just a capacitor bank that does nothing. This at least does do something, but we've always had sort of rip-off devices, uh, as long as we've had PCs, I would wager. And, uh, like I say, we, we couldn't play MPEG-1 at all on this PC before. Could have done it in software, but I mean, it would have been quite painful. Uh, so, hey, you know, it's it's not degrading performance of the, the machine in general. We'll just leave it alone. You know, it's, it's quite, it's, it's funny. I wouldn't find it funny if I'd bought it in 94, but... As it is, I didn't pay a lot for it, and it was like a couple of years ago, so... Don't care, I'm just going to leave it there. I wasn't using that slot anyway, so... Well, it's a slot warmer, isn't it? Stop the motherboard feeling cold. So, that's that's fine. I'll leave it there. No denying this video's... Uh, <laughs> run late. Uh, yeah. I'm not going to make excuses, I don't do that. I'm not going to try to pretend I'm not almost entirely disenchanted by this... Uh, in this by now. It's uh, it's pretty pretty magical, you know. It's funny because I think one of the only things that's kept me bothered is the fact that it's like the system's rigged. I mean, let's be honest. Like I've been doing this a long time. My quality isn't that bad. It's better than a lot of other channels, and uh, you know, uh, it's not like my audience is a, a horrible bunch that would be affecting things either. Like uh, it's it's weird, you know. You'd think we'd have done a, a lot better than we did. We'd have grown a lot bigger than we did. It's never happened. I guess we're not sellout enough. I guess we're not uh, scumbag and dickhead and losery enough to do that. So that's actually a plus because it means I don't have to put up with idiots. Because I mean, uh, bigger audience, the, the more likely you are to have idiots. And I'm kind of sick of dealing with people. I'm sick of dealing with the technology, but I'm sick of dealing with people. Like people just, you, I can't be the only one who's noticed ever since the pandemic went off. It's like people just strive to amplify their retardation to the max. It's like they're actively trying. It's like, how can you be such a fucking moron? Do you try to be a moron? And it's, oh, Zeph, you're, you're mad. You're always mad. You're always uh, arguing. Oh, you're not even bothering to argue because you've got no arguments. It's like, no, I wish I had enough enthusiasm left to get angry and argue. I don't. I value my time. It's finite. I'd rather use it to do something else. I can't be bothered. There's no point in me arguing. You, you wouldn't understand it. You, you can't comprehend the things I'm saying like you know people just I swear look at it people actively just speak gibberish and shit now like I can't be the only person who's noticed this like it's weird what the fuck's happened like people are always generally dumb but it's it's, it's just out of hand now and I, I can't be bothered dealing with it so no no I'm just gonna turn my back on that I'm gonna gonna go and like uh, do something else or do some music or like write something or you know uh, speaking of uh, selling out and uh, writing things, I did finish my book like a good while ago. And there's not many copies, so if anyone wants one, let me know. But it's not very good. There's a few small errors in it. Printing House didn't know what they were doing, so they couldn't do bold first text. But uh, I don't know. That was only for like chapter headings. So it didn't really affect it. It'll probably get printed again, so we'll try and get that fixed. Uh, I'd like to write more, and that's the thing, next year I won't be doing this YouTube as much. I'm going to dedicate a lot more time to writing. Uh, I'd like to write more books, because it's quite fun, and uh, nobody can really uh, get in my way with that. 
And uh, like I say, I'm just I'm, I'm tired of uh, dealing with the technology, the new technology, the old stuff's fine. I'm tired of dealing with the people, and uh, we've had to deal with a lot of shitty people, like sinister, like shady people this year who've uh, tried to do very shitty things, and uh, I just I can't be bothered. Like I say, I, I'm really I'm past it. I just that's the point where I'm at. I'm done. I've had more fun. So, yeah, don't be surprised if I make like four videos next year or something, because I'm not going to go away, but I only do this when I feel like it as well. This took so I just haven't felt like it. And you know this, and I'm not, I don't need to tell you all this again, and I'm not going to. I'm not going to waste time. And like I say, we're lucky. I'm, gl I'm glad. I think we won, technically. I think we won, because all, all the stupidity never came to this channel. All of the, the fucking annoyance and idiocy and fucking selling out and fucking been influenced and obliged to do and say shit that never came here so really we won this one and uh, I'm amazed we got away with it as long as we did because I, I figured YouTube would get rid of people like me and you a long time ago and they probably will at some point but uh, it's been a good run it's been a, it's been a good fucking run so we'll just ride it out while it lasts but yeah the, the enthusiasm is waning like I say, it's not like I'm just going to chuck all this stuff out and stop doing it. It's just... I'm not bothered with doing uh, videos as much now, so it's just when I feel like it. And I'll always feel like it sometimes. So, yeah, I had one planned. It didn't work out. The machine I was going to do a video on is not working. I don't know if I can fix it. Uh, obviously, I'll try, but I'm not hurrying to do that. I'm putting my money in other things, and, uh, yeah, well... It'll be what it'll be. If I can't get it going, I'll, I'll video something else. I've got other things I could do. Don't know. It's just whatever comes in my head. It, it'll just suddenly be like, oh, I'll just do that. I feel like doing that this week. And it'll happen. And that, that's the way I am. And that's the way it'll be. So until then, I'm High Treason. Thanks ever so much for what, And I do mean that. Because I, I don't make this with that expectation. I don't get anything out of this. I get the fun of making it. If someone wants to join me for that ride and... So many people have far more than you could reasonably expect. Like, when you think about it, we're at four figures worth of people. You know, that ain't no small thing. That I remember a world before the internet, and having, like, a thousand, two thousand, whatever people watch something I made is still utterly incredible to me. Because I remember when you were lucky if you had two or three people to see it, you know, and that was usually your parents at best. So, and they'd just pretend to, to be enjoying themselves even though they thought it was shite. So, hey, you know, as I say, I guess we won this one. And <laughs> no one's ever going to take that away. Uh, yeah, so, I'm High Treason, thanks for watching. And until next time, remember, never trust a man who's afraid to show you his face.